Hey y'all, I'm Jules. Welcome back to another episode of Spirit Sherpa, the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. With me as always is the spirit doctor, Kelly Sparta. Hello, Kelly. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Yes. I've got my new necklace on. I, I see that. Coffee. You're very colorful. Festival. Isn't it pretty? It's made out of seed beads, which are these tiny little and beads that they weave together by hand. I have another one here. That, that show, I'm show. See, now that we're on video, you can show and tell. Are, oh, my gosh. Look at that. Itty bitty little beads that they hand stitch together. And so all of these are made out of those. Wow. How so long does it take to fun. do that, I wonder? I don't even want to know. <laughs> So many, so many. That so is a labor money. of love. Yeah. Well, and, you know, it was like 25 bucks or 30 bucks because, you know, yeah. So it's amazing. But I love it. I love it. I love it. it makes it's me very happy. pretty. Thank you. Yeah. Waterfall I saw you post. Flowers. For those of you who are listening and not, not watching, it's a waterfall of flowers. Off yes. And there's yellow and orange and what is that? Pink or purple? They're, and then yeah, some blues and then a purple and then a teal and then a yellow and then an orange and then a darker orangish and then a, a bright pink at the very bottom. Right All right. See? There you go. So you're going to have to so, yeah. take a picture and put on TikTok or Instagram and all the yeah. all the socials. Well, on, on TikTok, I showed it balled up on the table in an earlier video. <laughs> I was like, this is the shit I got in, in, in the flower festival. So you kind of see it. Okay, now you have to do a, a display bit. piece. But now it's a display piece across display my piece. Yes. Yes. So anyway, so we're talking about <laughs> runes today and tarot yes. and the symbology of the divination systems. Divination systems. Yeah. So, so you asked me before we hopped on here, what's a divination system? What's a divination but, system? Yes. So, um... <laughs> A divination system is anything that you use to tap into the divine. And so uh, for us, it would be, you know, runes and tarot cards and oracle cards and uh, in palmistry, throwing the bones, doing tea leaf readings. Um, yeah, anything that, that helps you to read the future, right? Um, anything that helps you to connect into the collective unconscious is is pretty much... When we're dealing with symbology, we're, we're co connecting into archetypal constructs, the collective unconscious, the astral plane. It's basically the language of spirit. And so that's why we are so big on doing the mythology series on here so that you can start to have the symbology associated with all these different mythologies in your beingness because then spirit has a vocabulary to talk to you in, right? Symbology is the vocabulary that they, they talk to you in. So if you don't understand any symbols, then you have no way to effectively communicate deeply with spirit. And spirit likes to use symbology because symbology is not limited by words, right? So words have specific meanings and they have specific structures and they usually only mean one, maybe two things. Whereas an image can mean many things all at once and have multiple layers of meaning when applied to different parts of life. And so it's a much more robust language and it is not limited by the Tower of Babel languages that, you know, we don't understand each other's languages, right? So, uh, you know, there is differences for culture, obviously, and we've talked about that on previous episodes, but, um, but symbology is a more robust conversational um, thing. And now somebody, of course, is trying to call me because that would be too convenient for them not to. <laughs> Nobody calls me for days and suddenly out of the blue because I didn't hit. Yeah. Okay. Go away. Go splat. Okay. So, <laughs> go splat. Yes. So, uh, you know, this is, this is the, the general concept of when we, when we talk about symbology, that's what we're talking about. Right? Now. With that said, when we're talking about divination systems, they often operate in a uh, symbolic format, right? So when you are reading tea leaves, for instance, and if you've 
don't know anything about this. You you drink your tea and you get it. I was going to say, I don't know glass. anything about this. Okay. Yeah. So you put loose tea leaves in the bottom, fill it up, drink your tea while you're talking with the person. And then when your tea is down to the last little bit, just before you're about to drink the leaves, you hand uh -huh. it over to the reader. They take it, turn it upside down on the saucer, swirl it around, and then they see what the tea leaves say. And what they're looking for is images that appear in the loose tea leaves that are sitting in the saucer in terms of, you know, they may make the, the shape of a bird or of a building or, you know, whatever. They're looking for symbols in the tea leaves. And they're using that to tap their intuition to talk about whatever they need to talk about. And so it's a very symbolically based system, as is the tarot and many oracle cards. Not all oracle cards, but many oracle cards. Um, they are very symbolically based systems where you've got multiple sim symbols on a card and whatever one jumps out at you or two jump out at you is what's relevant to that reading, right? So, And that's that, going to, that's going mm -hmm. to change uh, for the person. So in other words, yes. a bird to me would mean differently possibly than a bird to you. Yes, yes. Okay. So it'll be based on the reader and sometimes based on the, the, the querent, the person asking the question. So, okay. Um, you will get different responses based on that, um, in terms of different interpretations, right? So your guides are going to send you the things that are important to you to know about for that reading, right? So if, and, and this, this happens actually, um, if you have multiple people read the same person, they will get different information and it's additive. It's not, it's not that one person's right and another one's wrong. It's that one person's seeing one aspect and another one's seeing another aspect. So okay. you see what you're tuned into. So classic example of this is, I, I think I told this story years ago on this podcast. So, um, but the classic example of this was when I had a mother-in-law, daughter-in-law come into my store and my business partner took the mother-in-law to one side of the room and I took the daughter-in-law to the other side of the room and we did the reading simultaneously. And the mother-in-law asked when she was going to have a grandbaby and he gave her a date two years out. And the daughter-in-law asked when she was gonna get pregnant. And I gave her a date that was nine months earlier than the date he gave. <laughs> and because she asked pregnant, not baby, right? Gotcha. So different, different questions, different answers, right? Yep, yep. Um, and while I'm on one side of the room telling the daughter-in-law that she needs to learn to stand on her own two feet, that she needs to become more independent, that she needs to step into her power, all of this stuff, he's on the other side of the room telling the mother-in-law, but you won't have a grandbaby if you don't tell your son to keep it in his pants. So I'm prepping her to be prepared for the divorce in the event that mother-in-law doesn't smack son upside the head and get him to get, get with the program get a shit straight. Wow. But I did not know that that was what, why I was telling her this because it wasn't relevant to me and they didn't want me to tell her. They wanted me to prepare her for it. But they didn't want me to tell her. Right? So I got the information I was supposed to have and he got the information he was supposed to have. He didn't know that I was telling her how to stand on her own and get ready for the divorce. Okay. We compared notes after the fact just to test our that's pretty freaking cool right yes oh my gosh that's cool and so this is what i'm saying is that you will get the information <clears throat> that you are tuned in to get and yes this isn't the same as saying you know two people read the same person they get different answers but it's the same concept right so you know if you are you know i'm always focused on personal growth and transformation right if somebody else is focused on manifestation and law of attraction or 
you know, energetic blocks, uh, you know, well, minus sort of energetic blocks too, or if they're focused on what's going to happen in the future, right? They're going to see different things than I see because they're asking different questions, right? So how we phrase our questions, the, the angle that we take, the, the, the interest point that we have when we do this work is dependent, it, it determines the answers that we get. Huh. So that's the thing to be aware of. And so if you wanted to, to, if you have a bunch of friends who are doing divination work, it'd be fun to have everybody do their own reading, write down what they got, or do it separately in a different room so that they don't like, you know, wig each other out, right? Psych each other out, right? Um, but, but have each one do their reading separately and then come together and see what the crowdsourced combination of things gives you as a, a broader scope. So, okay, so I have some, you know, different tarot cards um, mm -hmm. and I'll, how do I start working with them and learning, I guess, the symbology that, I guess, between me and my guides, you know, like, right. what does it? What does a dove mean to me? How do I see the dove? You know, whatever. How, how do I start doing that? The standard, uh, the, you know, the standard way of doing that is to, to do a card a day as a meditation and start with your deck and just sit down and meditate with each card. And so each day you do one card and you just journal about that card. The idea is you're coming into relationship with your deck. And so you, you look at the card and you get what you can get from it. General symbology, what does it feel like to you, whatever. Write it down before you look it up, okay? Before you look it up in the book. Okay, now, so now when I, when I put your hit on it first, and okay. then you look it up in the book and you write what the book says. Now am I, is, um, so like if when I was um, in the class, when I was pulling a card for the day and do my, I was mm -hmm. like, okay, what is my lesson for today? What do I need to kind of focus on today? Am I doing it that way? Or am I just pulling said random card off the top? Poof. Um, yes. You're working your way through the deck from start to finish. And okay. Making sure you get every card in the mix. Cause this is learning, learning what your deck is and what the cards are in it. Now I will tell you that is the traditional way of doing it. I have never had the patience to do that. I was going to say, okay, that's going to take, that's 78 you, cards. That's going to take a, a minute. Time. It takes a lot of time and discipline, and I suck at those things. So, um, <laughs> What's the Kelly yeah. shortcut way? <laughs> you start reading for people and, you know, look it up as you go, and, and eventually it'll ingrain itself in your brain. If you do enough readings for friends and for yourself, eventually it ingrains itself in your brain, right? Um but the other thing is, is start to learn how the different symbols are. I mean, we've been talking about developing a symbolic language for a while now, right? We've been talking about the symbology of different aspects of things. You've learned a lot of mythologies and that they're related. Like we know the story of Persephone and the pomegranate seeds are now about, you know, going into the underworld and having sustenance when you're in the underworld, being trapped there or maybe not trapped there, depending on whether, which version of the myth you read. You know, maybe I chose to be here and I ate these two seeds on purpose because I like my boyfriend and why not, right? My mommy doesn't have to know, right? Maybe it's that, you know, what is, is it? So all of the different things that a pomegranate can mean now, right? A pomegranate seed in particular. The apple, oh my God, you want to talk about a symbol, the apple and Eve, right? It's like- The it, serpent, don't forget the, the serpent. serpent. And, and the knowledge, the, the fruit of the tree of knowledge and the, the, the expulsion from Eden and all of that, right? It's so iconic that you can literally pick up almost anything. I'm gonna pick up a thing, of, thing and say, and you present it like that. And if it's round, People are going to perceive that as an apple mm -hmm. because that is so iconic. It's so much an archetype in our cultural bias that it is like that. I did that with a picture years ago, a black and white picture, had a amethyst ball in my hand and I went and I said, you want an apple? 
and the photographer took a picture and it's all in black and white and the amethyst is purple and everyone sees an apple. <laughs> everyone sees an apple. You know, the apple picture. I'm like, the amethyst picture? The apple picture. I'm like, mm -hmm. go back and look. They're like, oh my God, it's an amethyst. I'm like, uh-huh. But I, I asked, I, I invoked Eve when I took the picture and therefore it's an apple, right? So these are the types of things, the symbologies that show up, right? And these are the things that show up in the cards. What does the moon mean to you? So this, this could be another way to do it. And I highly recommend this way over the learn a card a day sort of thing. I would much rather see you take the symbology of the cards, like go through the cards and see what symbols you see repeated. Circles, moons, uh, wolves, uh, you know, the, well, the hold swords. On a the, are you there? Oh, I on. am. I am. Wait. <laughs> see, here we go. Hold okay. on. Oh, there she went. So, you know, you've got circles. You've got, yes. and then you've got the suits. If you're in a standard tarot deck, you've got the suits, right? And what are the cups and the pentacles and the see? swords and the, the wands? There we go. Oh, oh, you're in. Okay, so that's an, or, that's an oracle deck. It's an oracle? You're not going to. Yeah, okay. that's an oracle deck. That's the fairy. This is my fairy that's deck. The, that's the fairy oracle deck. Um, okay. And you're not going to have as much luck doing it with that kind of deck because there aren't a lot of repeated symbols in that deck. I, I recommend ah. that deck extensively. But that's why you have it is because I recommend it. <laughs> but, yes, but, um, and I love my deck. <laughs> a lot of repeated things. And, and that deck in particular is unique. Uh, because it is specifically tapping into actual fairies energies. And so those are actual real fairies that are being represented mm -hmm. in the deck. And okay, therefore, so that's oracle. It, it's a connection to the fairy itself rather than reading a symbology. So Okay, but wait, I have more. Way of working. Yes. Wait, <laughs> well, she, likes, she slices, she dices, she dealing on fries. <laughs> we, yes. Hocus pocus. Pocus pocus. Right, open it up. Let's see okay. what you got. This is the official. I got this as a uh, present. So Terra deck. And. All right. So it's my little guidebook. Yay. Okay. And so and we. We have to talk about runes before we finish because somebody wrote oh, yes. into me this morning about runes. Um, oh no, that's cool. I don't even know what a rune is. Make sure that I want to make sure that we cover the runes, but um, yes, you know, so so things like the fairy oracle deck are connecting into a specific energy, right? Runes are also connecting into a specific energy, what and is a so rune? a rune is a Norse version of a, well, a rune itself. A single rune is a is a Norse character. Okay, and each oh. it's part of their language, the, the writing system of the Norse. And so each character has a meaning. So like Tyr, um, okay, do not come at my face if I get these wrong. It has been probably about eight years since I've read runes, so I'm going to do my best. So Hagel, H-A-G-E-L, I believe, is the little H with the diagonal, it's diagonal on the center. Uh, on the cross grace, uh, that one is breakdown and disaster and things like that. It's, it's sort of the equivalent of the hanged man card in or the tower in uh, the tarot. Okay, uh, and tear is the the little T shaped one, and it's all about um, success, right? Um, okay, you know, sort of like it's victory, not so much success, victory, right? And then there's one that looks like a lightning bolt S, right? Oh and, yeah, and I've I seen that. Don't remember what that's called, but uh, that one is success. And then there's a, a journey rune that's sort of like an R. That one's for journeying, uh, for taking for travel, right? So that sort of thing is how you work with runes. Is that you're working with the, the general concept of the characters and you put the runes in a bag, you pull them out, you throw them down on the table, and then it is about which ones are upright and which ones are face down. The ones that are upright are your reading. And then it's also about oh. where they are in relation to one another be on the table. So are they squished together? Is something sitting off by itself? Is mm -hmm. it sitting amongst a bunch of things that are face down? And so there's a lot of influences that we don't understand right now. They're influencing it, right? You know, that sort of thing. So you're looking at it from that perspective, right? So, you know, finding, 
finding a deck or a system that works for you is a matter of trial and error. You have to go with what, what you like, right? Um, so Shannon Grissom was on a while back talking about her Sock Monkey Oracle The deck. Sock Monkeys, yes. Yes. Well, the Sock Monkey deck, it, it <clears> doesn't <throat> have a lot of repeated imagery either, but it, it has its own magic. I mean, I you don't have to do anything at all to read that deck. It has become my new favorite deck, by the way. And I use it for myself all the time. And it is inherently magical. And I think it's inherently magical because she made it to be magical and it's still very close to her. A lot of the, the other systems have been used for so long that their energy, the original magic of them has been dis, you know, dissipated through constant use and lots of other people's energies. This deck is really close to her and it is spot on. <laughs> It's terrifying how good it is. So I'm just saying, if you Sweet. have not picked up a copy of that deck, you need to because damn. Um, yeah, it has been, it has called everything. I'm just, I'm like, well, I don't normally do a lot of readings for myself because guides usually tell me what's going on. But, you know, I've been in a massive transformation and change since I've been moving to Panama. So I've been doing a little bit more checking in than I normally would just because I'm, I'm busy, and so I may not be conscious and, and picking up on everything. So I give them a chance to talk to me through the deck, you know, every two or three weeks or so, just until I can get things back on an even keel from the move, right? Like, I literally just shopped yesterday, been living on the same six, you know, like 10 days worth of clothes for, for six months now because I couldn't find any clothes that fit me here. And so I finally found a store where things fit me, which is why I have a different shirt on today than you've ever seen before, because I just bought it. But, you know, Sweet. that sort of thing. I'm still getting settled in. And so I'm, I'm using my deck more uh, than I normally would at this point. So um, because I'm, I, I've got too many other distractions going on. And this is something that's good to know about yourself. If you know that you're distracted, then give your guides extra chances to talk to you. Like I'll lay in bed for an extra 10 or 15 minutes after I'm awake, just in the quiet, in the darks with nothing to distract me so that my guide and I'll let my brain drift so that my guides have a chance to talk to me when I'm quiet, because I know once I get up, my day is going to be filled. Right. Mm -hmm. So that sort of thing, it's not a morning meditation per se, you know, but it is because it's a morning connection, right? It's my morning connection to my guides. So, you know, these are all sorts of things that you can do. And if you're like me and you're, you're like somebody who, you know, just gets going and it's like, I'm on, let's do it. <laughs> right? Then, you know, it's hard to turn off. It's hard to stop that and get quiet. Yeah, and it is. You know, it's better to work with your circadian <clears throat> rhythm and know when is your good times to do these things. So I'm early mornings when I'm drifting, that's my best time. I can just stay in that sort of alpha theta state where I am not fully conscious yet. And so I'm still tapped into the divine. Well, I don't know what's going on with my hair. Just got my hair cut. It's doing weird stuff. I, that, that would be what happens when you, when you dry your hair in the car uh, with the windows open. <laughs> so. Mine does the same thing, actually. Yeah, this, this is all product. <laughs> Mine does the same thing. It just got, I'm like... <clears throat> Yeah. 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 It's like, uh, yeah. So yeah. anyway, is there, um, yeah. So yeah. this is what I'm saying is give yourself the space. Right. But so for, for <clears> rooms, <throat> for, for the, um, fairy Oracle, for the, for Shannon's deck of the sock monkey Oracle, where you're tapping into very specific energies with each item that you're working with, then that is more about learning the, the energy of the card, the power deck, Lynn Andrews power deck is similar to that. It's got, um, the picture on the front and then the reverse has the meaning. Um, but her power deck has a lot of shared images as well. So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of ability to read that, uh, shared imagery as well as the, the actual item on the, the back of the card. So hers is sort of a, a melange of the two, right? It's a mixture. So the thing about learning decks the way that I'm talking about with learning the symbols is that it allows you, if you want, to do multi-deck readings. And I do that all the time if, because I find that different decks are good for different purposes, right? So like the, um, the Crystal Allies deck. The, now, I have the original Crystal Allies deck, not the new one. 
Um, okay. So I'm not talking about the new one. The original is not available <coughs> anymore. I apologize, but I'm going to talk about it because it's one of my regular decks that I use. Um, but it's very good for doing sort of inner emotional uh, readings, right? So reading about the emotional content of something. That particular deck is particularly good for that. Um, the Rider weight I find, is better for physical outcome sort of things. It's like this is what's going to happen in the world, right? Mm -hmm. The Fairy Oracle is good for getting sort of uh, advice and mm -hmm. spunk. You know, it's like, that's, that's, it's like that's the fairy oracle. Yeah, they're they're kind of spunky. They're fun. They're very fairy, right? So it's it's you're getting sort of a very per fairy perspective on it, which is useful. I mean, look how cute. I mean, seriously, they're, they're just all, so cute. That's Indy. We love Indy. He shows you. I know he's so sweet. So, yeah. So you know, and and you get to you you come into relationship with the fairies through that deck, and they they help and advise you in that. Oh, way, they right? talk to you real quick. Sometimes they mess with you too, but you know. That's yes, fairy. they do. It's very fairy, and you know, so uh, you know, a lot of these decks have their own things that they're good for, right? And the power deck is obviously good for you know personal empowerment pieces and things like that. So, I will often mm -hmm. do mixed readings. I'll do readings of multiple different decks at the same time, but the really brilliant thing about learning the symbols individually within the decks is being able to take the moon in the uh in the um the moon card in the tarot and the moon that's on the power deck card magic that you've done and the moon over here on this other card and because these are common theme elements that that repeat and maybe it's a circle in one place and a moon in another but you're looking at the 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 combination of things and that's how you know what impacts itself what impacts each other and things like that right so when you first start reading you start thinking okay so this card means this and that card means that and that card means that mm -hmm. and then if i put these three cards together they mean xyz and it's very linear that yes. is not how the spiritual world works. I understand that's how you're going to start it because we've learned the in linear time in <laughs> our existence, but that is not how the spiritual world works. It is very holistic. Everything impacts each other. Where a card lands on the table is as important as what the card says. How a card comes out of the deck is as important as what the card says. And when I say that, I mean, not just does it come upright or reversed, but does it jump out of the deck by itself? Oh, shuffling? see, that's what mine do. You know? I yeah. can be shuffling and I'm like, all right, what do you want to say? <laughs> okay, yeah. I guess that's what you want. Yes. <laughs> Literally yeah. flies out the deck. Yes. Can't so make it up. How it comes out of the deck is relevant yes. for me because that doesn't normally happen to me when I'm shuffling. When a card comes flying out of the deck, it's because it's what the, the person did not want to see. It's the card they wanted to throw away. Because for me, they don't yeah. normally come flying out of the deck. So, um, you know, this, and again, every reader is going to have their own thing on this, right? You will develop this over time. Do not be in a hurry to get there. You'll get there. The more readings you do, the more you're going to start to see things in a broader perspective and so on. So have you laid out your cards so we can look at the commons? Common, oh, uh, sure. Well, I'm limited sorry, on space, but. I'm prepping her for it. <laughs> I do what? I was talking to give you time to lay them out. So right. find, find a few cards with, with a similar symbol on them because you will find that. Oh, gosh. And let's do something that's not the actual suits. So do it from the Hocus Pocus deck and let's not talk yeah, about the suits because the suits are covered in the book. So I want to talk about something that's not covered in the book for you. Okay, so let's see. Let me see here. As she's flipping cards. As I'm flipping, I know, right? Flipping, so, flipping, flipping. And I'm yes. flipping, and I'm flipping, and I'm trying to find some stuff. I don't even know. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see. I have uh, Ace of Candles. Okay. So that's a Wands. Okay. Oh, and okay. she's, she's the candle. Okay. Okay. No, the candle's in front of her. Okay. Yeah, see the little candle's in front of her. Tilt the thing back a little so I can see better. Yep. Sorry. Okay. Oh, is that better? Yep. Nope, I can't tell. Good. Okay. Now I have the Fool. Which also has a candle. Which also has a candle. 
Okay, is he lighting it? I can't tell. Uh, let me see. He's either lighting it or like taking like the flame off of it. One of the two. Okay. All right. So put her back up again. Now okay. I want you to notice their bodies. So I'm, my sense is that in this deck, given these two cards, that the body postures matter. Okay. And if you look at hers, she's got the candle in front of her, but it almost looks like she's got her hands on her hips. Yeah, right. she's holding she's holding the bottom of the candle. Right. She she she's like, "Hello, yeah. here's the candle." Sorry for the, right. you know, just shot, but it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. See, so she's so, all those people who are like listening, yeah. they're like, Hi. Hey, "What the hell?" <laughs> yes, come to come to YouTube. Yes. Come to YouTube. So, um, you know, look at her eyes too. Her eyes are closed. Eyes are closed. She's got her head tilted up, and she's got a fake uh angel halo on yes and wings but she's also a fairy fairy those are fairy wings right yes yes so she's a fairy with fake angel wings looking up at the sky holding her candle and it looks like she's almost making a wish right mm -hmm. that's the that's the feeling of the card right right and now he on the other hand the fool is and and leave her up next to him so i can come yeah can put them side by side. So he's sitting there, one hand across his body, the other one reaching out to the candle. So there's a defensive posture, hand across mm -hmm. the body, reaching out to the candle and taking the flame off the candle. Because I think you're right, it does look like he's taking the flame off the candle. And so, then if, if you look in the background, I swear that's another candle way like okay. shadowed in the background right there. Yeah, I can't. It. it yeah, maybe it is. It, it looks like it. Um, it's hard to tell from here, but. Um, it is. It's cotton cob cobwebs. Ah, okay. So that's got all kinds of symbology, right? So cobwebs are grandmother spider about connecting into the spiritual world, but the cobwebs are also about a space of disuse, right? And where where things have been left behind. Can you pull the, that the fool closer to the camera? Yes. So we can see it a little better. Yes. And now we can see the cobwebs. So, can you see it? Okay. Um, and, and the candle in the background doesn't That's look him. like it's lit so much as it's... No, it's like, not. It's, it's like a plastic candle. Yeah, almost, right? almost like one of those light bulby kind. Right. So it doesn't look like it's it's actually lit. It looks like a, an imitation. Yeah. It's an imitation candle, and he is messing with the big candle. And if you look, the candle in the he's messing with that he's pulling the flame off of looks like it's in a cauldron. And you can see yes. that the candle she's holding is in a similar colored bowl to the cauldron. So that's a repetitive image as well, right? So the, the two together are repeating themselves, right? And, you know, hers has this sort of airy open feeling because she's clearly outside. His feels very mm -hmm. closed in. It's a, it's a weird imagery f image for the fool because it's the fool is typically about stepping off into the unknown and this instead is you know picking up a, a flame which i guess could be considered a you know <laughs> foolish doing something, doing something unwise or something unexpected right but it, it has less of that sort of starter energy and and the starting of something new leap of faith sort of thing that you get from most fool cards so um, the deck is kind of interesting in that regard, but I, I would find combina So if I were to look just at the, at the Fool card by himself, I would say that there is a, a memory, since it's behind him, of a past experience with the candle that is holding on to him and, and keeping him from wanting to move forward. But he is still picking up the flame to, to carry it forward into the, his next space, despite his reticence from doing so, right? That's what I would get from that card because okay. of that. Now, someone else could read that card and say, uh, okay, so we've got this situation where this person is, is stepping into their magic and they are ignoring the things that are not real magic, like the fake candle in the background, right? See, that's where I was kind of going. 
Right. So these, all of these interpretations could be valid depending on the person you, who you're reading, right? So, you know, there's lots of ways to read the same card and it all just depends. Sometimes you might ignore the thing in the background altogether and just focus on the flame itself and say, he's picking up the flame, he's carrying the torch forward, you know, he's just doing it in his hands, right? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, he's, he's picking up the flame and it's not burning him. And that is because he's owning his new identity, right? Or, you know, there's lots of ways to read that card. You see what I'm saying? You see mm -hmm. how that goes? Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a broader scope, but you're working with metaphor and metaphor requires symbology to speak the language, right? Because the symbology is the vocabulary of metaphor, right? Vocabulary of metaphor. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So now do I look to see what my little guidebook says kind of thing, or do I just go, go kind of what I'm feeling with? Well, so ultimately you're going to end up with what you're feeling with, but when you're a new reader, oftentimes you don't know what you feel and you're kind of guessing. And so it's right. helpful to read the book and see what the book says and then say, do I agree with that or do I not agree with that? Okay. So I see it says uh, the character's name is Max. So Max is quick to accept his wrongdoings and begin his adventure, working tirelessly throughout the night to stop the, the Sanderson sisters. Learn from his examples to keep your conviction as you start your own journey. Though the night is long and has just begun, a wonderful dawn awaits you at the end. The journey's reward will be well worth the effort it takes. Okay, so this is actually based on the movie. Yes. Okay, so, you, so this deck you're going to have a, a, a harder time with if you don't really know the movie well. Because it is based in the mythology of the movie of the so movie. You, yeah. You really have to know the movie to use the deck effectively. Yeah. I mean, I, I could use it, but I would make up my own meanings and it would probably contradict some of the things that the, the thing says, because I don't know the movie. Right. 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 So um, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But about the, you know, doing your journey and all that. But you know, when I look at it, I'm like, well, dude, you're about to burn your fingers. You're not looking we're, you know, you're not paying attention to what you're doing. Because right. to me, what struck me about this is the nonchalantness that's on his face. It's right. the expression on his face. Yeah. The only reason I didn't say the same thing is because he's already got it in his hands and it's not burning it. Yeah. Yeah. And then the little chick, she's Ace of Candles. Ace of Candles. Oop, just saw it. She is, let's see, a newfound passion has begun to burn within your heart. Follow the flames to begin a journey filled with inspiration, ambition, and expansion. The start of a new adventure lies before you, should you be brave enough to face the flames. Okay. So she's all about ad adventure. She's like, right. mm, I'm getting ready to start. You can't stop yeah. me. Yeah. I didn't like the cold anyway. Different movie, but still. <laughs> <laughs> Cold never bothered me anyway. Yeah. Yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I got you. Mm -hmm. I got you, baby. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, um, yeah, so, uh, you know, you're getting the idea here, right? And yeah, so, totally. I think the, the question, and you've got your your Spirit Sherpa notes up, right? Um, I, I think this question was actually theoretically? submitted by someone. Oh, it is. So, who, who submitted this question? This was Tasha. Wolf. I believe her middle name is Lonnie. I don't think it's Loney. I think it's Lonnie. T Tasha Lonnie Wolf. She yes. requ Thank you so much for requesting this. This was fun. <laughs> and so this was way fun. I, if I remember, though, her question was actually about how do you pick a, a, an appropriate one for you? And was Let me he discuss uh, how divination tools are designed, the symbols they use, and how learning the foundations of the symbols allows you to almost immediately use any divination tool. Yes. Okay. So we've kind of done that, right? We've, <coughs> we've talked about, so when you start to see the individual symbols within the deck, then you can translate those to any deck, any, any time, any place. And that's a far more robust way of learning your uh, divination tools 
than anything of just sitting with the card and then reading the card and doing the whole thing, right? You know, it's, it's, it's a far more robust way because then you don't have to take time to get to know every deck. I can read with anyone's deck, anytime, anywhere, and give you a decent reading off of it. Now, you know, there are limitations to that with things like the Oracle decks, like like the Fairy Oracle, right? Mm -hmm. You've got those you're getting to know the people, you know, the, the actual energies of the fairies. Um, so there's yes. limitations to it. But if it's a traditional deck of any kind with actual symbology on it, I can read it. And I won't have to spend time with the cards to be able to do that because I understand the symbology underneath it. And if, when you learn the symbology, that's the way to do that, right? So now, as far as picking a system, because I know somebody asked me that question, and I'm going to answer it here. Picking a system that works for you is about trying it out and seeing how it feels. You'll know when you've got the right system for you when you are excited to work with the cards. Okay, there are some decks, and, and now here's, here's a fair warning, right? Some decks come into your life for a season, and some are in for your whole life, right? I have a deck that my mother gave me when I was 12 years old. It's still my go-to Rider Waite variety deck. It's the Moroccan Fez deck, not the Rider Waite, wait, but okay. whatever. Um, it's a traditional tarot. And, you know, I've had other decks that I was super excited to get. Like, I had the Dragon Oracle. I had the Goddess deck. I had all of them, right? And I, I used them for a little bit. There you go. I used them for a little bit. And then I went, eh, and I moved on, right? So, so sometimes you're excited to work with something, and sometimes things come and go. Like, you know, the, there's a, a Native American deck. Uh, the Sacred, oh, I got that one, too. Sacred Power cards or something. Sa yeah. Sacred Power and something else. Yes. But wait, there's more. Okay. <laughs> okay, there's the... No, I thought this would be a fast one. <laughs> right. Sac Sacred <laughs> Path cards. Sacred Path and cards, then, that's what it is. And then the medicine cards. That's the, like, right. sister deck that goes with them. Right. So you got so, these two little dudes. Yes. These are fun. Yes. Oh, my gosh. So when I'm feeling like I want more story... I go to the sacred path cards because there is a story that goes with every single card and and you learn a lot about uh the particular oh my gosh they're amazing culture. i think it's is it lakota i can't remember um i'm gonna say it, it wrong yeah. i want to say it's lakota i i think it's lakota but um but the spe the specific tradition of that tribe is is what they are explaining in these cards the author um and so, you know, those are cards that I go to for that. And so sometimes I'm excited about them, and sometimes they sit in my closet for, like, months or years, right? And then I bring them back out again, and I go, oh, look, there you are, you know? And, and so the, the key is to not put any expectations on yourself about how you're going to be with your decks and with your, your divination tools. Work with what calls to you in the moment and don't expect that that will be the same thing from moment to moment because it probably won't be. Different, different decks, different uh, uh, types of divination are good for different circumstances. Trust your intuition to tell you which ones to use in any given circumstance. And practice a bunch of different ones. Try them out. See what you think, right? You know, you, you don't know what works for you until you start doing it. You know, I learned palmistry when I was 16 years old. I still remember a few things from that, and I use them every now and again. I mean, it's, it's not my tradition. It's not my, it's not my divination tool, but it was fun to learn. And I still have a few things here and there that are nice little party tricks in the interim, right? But, so, you know, nothing you learn is wasted and you will eventually make use of it at some point and along the way. So, you know, uh -huh. experiment. This is, this is one of those few places where I'm gonna say, experiment to your heart's content and I'm not really worried about it, right? The only exception to that rule would be maybe the Thoth deck. <laughs> um, 
T-H -O -T -H. Oh, T -H -O -T -H. I do not have that one, kids. So, yeah, so I started <laughs> very early on with that deck and, and moved away from it. It's, it's got a lot of dark imagery. Uh, it was it was Alistair Crowley's deck. So Oh, that's where he, I know that from. He created that deck. And it's great if you're a little further along in your process, but I would not start with it <laughs> unless you are deep into the dark goddess, dark god, dark ritual stuff. Um, it's really more of a more advanced deck. So for that reason, I would just say hold off on that one until you get a little further down the path. But if you are further down the path and you're listening to this, then eh, you might want to check that one out, right? So, yeah. But everything else, eh, try it. If it calls to you, try it. See what happens, right? Um, you know, I would say if that the, you only want to buy things that call to you that are brand new. Um, mm -hmm. the, the used decks, especially for brand new practitioners, I've seen so oh. many brand new practitioners be like, oh, this called to me, this crystal called to me, this deck called to me, and it's got something attached to it, and now you're, you're possessed or you've got a crap going on or whatever. So stick with new decks if you're new, right? Stick with decks that you get from the store. And do not listen to anybody who tells you that you can't buy your own damn deck. I bought many, I, I bought most of my decks myself, okay? So buy your own damn deck. Get what you want. <laughs> That's what I did. Dude, I was yeah. in the metaphysical store, and this was actually my first little one. It was called the Imperial Dragon Oracle. Mm -hmm. You know, I love dragons. I don't know where I'm like, hey, I see dragons everywhere. And this, look, it's a tiny little deck, right? Yeah. So it wasn't intimidating. Because I'm right. like, oh, my God, 78 cards. I got to memorize all this stuff. <laughs> you, know? you know, so and the the pictures, whoop, well, he's upside down. You can't see him. But the pictures, artistry Ooh, is just beautiful. phenomenal. Yeah. Right. Nice. And then the the book is like short, sweet, to the point, <laughs> done. Right. So yeah. for a first one, absolutely. And yeah. look, these suckers, th these little dragons, they don't mess around. They will tell you real quick. Yeah. And for one card pulls, oh my gosh, it's, yeah. it, I'm like, okay, all right, I'm on the track. <laughs> oh no, I'm not on the right track. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that's like the Sock Monkey Oracle. They're very, very good for that. Yeah. They're very good idea. for that. Yeah. So two, as two people, pulls, perfect. as people are, say, with um, the tarot uh, deck or tarot, depending on how you say it, um, or there's some like, here's how not to piss your deck off. <laughs> Don't treat it disrespectfully. Don't leave it on the floor where your dog can eat it. Don't. Okay. You know, don't leave it on the floor. Don't get it wet. Don't put it down on the table where wet things are. Clean the table before you put it down and dry it off. You know, just treat it with respect. I mean, I, I put mine in bags. Or, or in the original box that they came in, just so yeah, that they little have bags. protected space. I don't leave them out loose because uh -huh. that's also letting random energies get to them, right? Um, but I, I always mean, say thank you afterwards. I'm like, hey, thank you so much. Appreciate okay. you. I've never done that, but you totally could. You know, I'm, I'm literally just connecting into the deck. I don't treat it as a separate entity in as part of the process, but... Um, you know, I know some people who do, and that's okay. You know, it's an animist perspective, and you mm -hmm. know, there's a lot of things that I'm animist about. It's just not the deck. Um, so, you know, I, 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 see the, I see my decks as a doorway to intuition, right? So I see them as, a, as a, literally a frame that I walk through, you know? It's like... Here's the, the pathway through the symbology to give me the broader scope of meaning, right? That's how I see them. So I don't gotcha. see them as individual entities so much as, as, as you know, frames. Yeah. You know, door frames. Okay. Even in the fairy deck? It, well, the fairy deck is, you know, the, the card is a, is a doorway to the fairy, right? Right. It's just a gateway to the fairy. Gateway to the fairies. Okay. To that particular okay. fairy. This this card is the gateway to that. Like Indy's card is the gateway right. to Indy. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I just sort of see it that way. I've never, I've never put it into words before this moment. <laughs> but Leave it to me. <laughs> you, you know, you were 
pale skin, so I'm like, yeah, how do I do that? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> about it, I don't know. Yeah. It's so. hilarious because it's like I'll ask you something, you're like, I never thought about it. I just kind of do it. Mm, now I have right. to articulate it. I'm like, uh, hello. I get, have not been doing this for 40 something years you know <laughs> no, I, I do put it in words for you though you just got to do a minute because you I, do I, sometimes I have just have never thought about it I just do it I don't know you know let me let me reverse engineer what I'm doing and then say it out loud because that's what I got you know there you go so. there you go and I know our listeners appreciate it too because you can hear them going but how do you do it right <laughs> The answer is, how do you do magic? (laughs) Intention. Yes. (laughs) I got that one down. (laughs) (laughs) I've only asked it 50 times. (laughs) Only 50 times. But Kelly, how do I do that? How do you do magic? (laughs) Intention. (laughs) Don't make it harder than it is. Yeah, Yeah, left brain, go to sleep. Right brain, come on, kick in. That's been the All hardest right, well, part for me. So, yeah, we are we are coming up on an hour here. <laughs> so okay, we got to go. What happened to the hour, man? We 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 don't normally talk this long just between us. So, I don't well, know it was fun here, though. Where? So, it, we did show and tell, and we did a really good podcast. Yeah. <laughs> we love the show and tell. Yes. Yes. So I, I like your toys. Yeah. Well, you see, I keep them all. So. Um, you brought so, them all to do the show and tell. I'm so happy. I know, and this was not planned. <laughs> this was not I was planned. I should have pulled my cards out. I didn't think to do that. <laughs> this was not planned whatsoever. And I was like, wait, but I have one. Hold on. <laughs> Let me go to the magic bag. <laughs> I am prepared. I am the, the Girl Scout of Tarot. <laughs> and I'm so not. <laughs> Today. Okay. <laughs> hey, I'm I'm there. I'm there. Oh, so yes. yes. So Tasha, thank you so much for asking that question because this turned into a really fun podcast. So hopefully y'all enjoyed it also. And if yeah. you do, do the YouTube thing, like and subscribe, yeah. and you know, so that you know everybody else can find us and share share. Tell everybody else about this and cool share. podcast. Yeah. Please share. Yes. So, because, you know, I've been on YouTube for seven years. I think I've got 300 followers. <laughs> we got to get so those I've numbers up. I've actually tried to get followers. I've just, like, thrown random shit up there. <laughs> like, hey, by the way, it would be really useful to, if you, if you, it would be, it would be actually beneficial to go back mm-hmm. and find the actual videos um of of the things that i put up in the past because there's a lot of really good stuff back there so you know if if you're tooling around looking for something to do i'd go back into my back podcast content and and check that out so or my my back uh youtube video content that was not the podcast i mean the podcast episodes obviously are useful but there are a lot of videos on there that i think many of you have never seen um, and that includes you, Jewel. So, <laughs> I pro- probably so, <laughs> more so, than yeah. likely. So, um, okay. Uh, Kelly isn't so, for the day. Kelly isn't for the day. Um, do what feels good. Learn, learn your, learn your, uh, learn your vocabulary. Learn your vocabulary. Create your metaphors and do what feels good. There you have it, kids. There you go. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all that we write these things in advance. <laughs> <laughs> we just off the cuff. I have my little script. We're good. Because <laughs> I don't want to screw up the intro and the ending. Although, that's you it. know. So, so. <laughs> I, I want to just point out that there's a really cool quiz on the website called uh, uh, What is Your Shadow Work Quotient? Or sh- Shadow Work, Your Readiness for Shadow Work Score? Or something yes. like that? Is yes. Yes. Readiness for Shadow ready Work. For, yeah, are you ready for shadow work? And and so if you have not taken that quiz, that I've got people saying, oh my God, that was scarily accurate. So, <laughs> so uh, you know, check that out. It's on the top of every page on the website. There's no way you can miss it if you go on the website, kellysparta.com. And uh, you can also download the Boundaries for Empaths program off the homepage of the website, 
to help you to feel more solid as an empath and to not be overrun by other people's strong emotions. So sign up for those. Get on the mailing list because if you liked this episode, you can actually come on live while we're recording, hear the episode earlier than everybody else gets to hear it, and then get to ask a question while you're on the call if you want. Live on the call. Live With a caller. Yes. Yes. I'm trying to. That's going to be fun. Sunday, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. I'm like, what is that phrase? <laughs> right? And it's like, shit. Okay. Yeah, you could be, you could be on the call with us yes. and get your podcast early. Or come on down and be the come next on caller on, on the, the Kelly Spirit Sparta Sherpa. <laughs> on Spirit Sherpa. <laughs> Shit. You Spirit are the Sherpa. next caller. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's going to be it. <laughs> that's it. That's it. I don't know. I'm just making Are you sure. ready for some spirit? Spirit Sherpa today. I can't sing, but that's all right. All right, y'all. <laughs> that's going to be all that we have for this week because we done got slap happy over here. <laughs> so you're going to tune in next time <laughs> when she adds another <laughs> chapter into your guide, into energy magic in the spirit world. That'd be Kelly because she over there on my screen. <laughs> I'm Jules, here with Kelly Sparta, and you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. So long, everybody. Bye. Go get your deck, go get your deck, go get your deck.